The executive gives the fire commands to the gun crew. Number one, adjust. Number one, adjust. Shell H-E. Shell H-A. Charge normal. Charge normal. Numbers nine and ten take the powder from the container and remove the igniter protective cap. If charge normal is ordered, they untie the straps, remove the super increment section, and retie the straps. Number 11 removes the plug from the projectile, and number 8, making sure that the washer is in place, inserts the fuse and tightens it with the fuse wrench. Base deflection, right, three, zero. Number one, one round. Number one, one round. Quadrant, nine, five. Quadrant, nine, five. Number six and seven place the projectile on the loading tray and carry it to the breach. They place the tray in the breach recess and lock it in place. Numbers two and three, home, push the projectile forward until it has cleared the breech recess. Ram. They then ram it in place. Number six removes the tray. Number three replaces the rammer staff in its original position. Number five takes the prepared powder charge and places the charge in the chamber with the lashed end to the front and the igniter pad flush with the rear of the chamber. Number one closes the breech. Number two takes the primer from the box and inserts it in the firing mechanism. He then places the firing mechanism in its seat in the breech. Number four sets the announced elevation on the gunner's quadrant and places it on the leveling plates. He signals to the gunner to depress or elevate the piece until the bubble is centered. Elevation of the breech must always be the final motion. Number one calls... Set! And the gunner calls... Ready! Number one unlocks the percussion hammer lock bolt and grasping the lanyard in his right hand stands clear of the recoil. As soon as the executive sees that the gun is ready, he commands... Fire! Then the chief of section signals to fire. Fire! To check the functioning of the recoil mechanism, the chief of section must measure the length of recoil. To do this, he coats the edge of the cradle with chalk. After the gun is fired, he measures the distance between the recoil pointer and the far end of its trace on the chalked surface. Now, in slow motion, note the length of recoil and how the tube returns smoothly to battery. As soon as the tube returns to battery, Number two removes the firing mechanism. Number one removes the lanyard and opens the breech. Number three swabs out the powder chamber after each round. He also inspects the bore. If the primer fails, no report will be heard. Three attempts are made to fire it. Then if it still fails to fire... The fire number one, sir! Two minutes must elapse before the firing mechanism may be removed from the breech. Remove firing mechanism. Special tools are provided to remove the firing mechanism so that the cannoneers will not be exposed to an unexpected recoil.
Number two inserts a primer in the extra firing mechanism and seats it in the breech. The gun is then fired in the normal manner. Set. Ready. Ready. After completion of the firing, the gun is cleaned and lubricated. Numbers one and two take the breech mechanism apart, cleaning and oiling it. The bore is swabbed with a solution of soda ash and hot water. It is then washed with clear water and thoroughly dried. If the gun is to be fired in the near future, a light coat of lubricating oil is then applied. If it is not to be used immediately, a rust preventative is used. The slides and moving parts of both top and bottom carriages are cleaned and oiled. The material is carefully inspected for loose or broken parts. March order! At the command, march order, the chief of section checks to make sure the piece is not loaded. The sighting equipment is removed and returned to the chest. The recoil pit is filled, the ammunition loaded, and the piece is prepared for travel. Cannon air for paramount! And so, out of the reserve weapons reclaimed from the last World War, the United States has adapted to modern conditions an important weapon for the defense of democracy. <laughs>